You may not be able to put your finger on it, but if you're traveling along the north shore of Lake Superior, something changes. There's no hard line or signage where this change takes place, but there is a zone of transition that bridges the gap from one to the other. On either side of this transition, we have our two opponents competing to survive. Introducing first, fighting out of the north, we have Canada's largest forest that spans the entire nation. Weighing in at 270 million hectares, this forest is dominated by coniferous species. We have the burned bruiser, the boreal forest! And now, introducing out of central Canada, we have the country's second largest forest. Weighing in at 30 million hectares, dominated by mixed hardwood species, we have the deciduous destroyer, the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Forest! This bout takes place in the transition zone between these two forests, which means we get to see both competitors' style in one natural environment. Are you listening? Since we are in a transition zone, we can ask questions like, who would win in a fight, the mighty red maple or the brazen black spruce? Do you prefer maple syrup or spruce tea? Which is better for lumber, dense, strong wood or something that is light and flexible? Are you seeking shade created by broad leaves or do you crave the inviting fragrance of an earthy evergreen? I'm sure we would all answer these questions differently because each has their own strengths and weaknesses and we all have our own preferences. Now, of course, spruce and maple trees cannot fight, but in this arena, both trees compete to play their role in keeping our forests and watershed healthy and diverse. In Canada, we have eight different forest regions, and when one region meets another, we have a transition zone. Around Lake Superior, we're lucky to experience both the Boreal and Great Lakes St. Lawrence forests in such close proximity to each other. But it is the diverse mix of these two regions together that is a large part of the watershed and identity of the area. Although black spruce and red maple thrive in different types of forests, there are a lot of similarities in the way that they compete. Both species occupy poorly drained, wet, acidic soils and are commonly found in swamps. Each is reliant on the wind for pollination and in this transition zone, both can be found alongside each other battling to survive. Now, enough of the camaraderie. Let's see what sets these fighters apart. Confined to the cold, temperate or boreal regions of the Northern Hemisphere, the brazen black spruce can survive the extreme cold and harsh winters. To do so, they create shallow rooting systems in the top layer of soil which dries out and heats up enough in the arctic or northern conditions to make it possible for growth. Their sharp conical shape makes them capable to bear winter snow and shed it off as temperatures warm or winds blow. Like many species in the boreal forest, black spruce has a close relationship with wildfires. After a fire burns, the seed bed is prepared for germinating seeds and the ashes provide nutrients from the burned litter. By creating the perfect conditions for itself to thrive, pure, dense stands can regenerate naturally, giving us that typical evergreens fading into the distance view of the boreal forest. Maple trees are found all over the world with 124 different species and 95 subspecies. That is a lot of trees. The mighty red maple is one of Eastern North America's most widely distributed species. The red maple has enough fighting spirit to compete in much drier sites and variable conditions. In the Great Lakes St. Lawrence, it is the red maple that adapts better to the temperate climate and changing of seasons. Shedding its leaves each fall, and then dormantly waiting out the winter, spring arrives with new growth, and then the summer is spent taking in the sun and enjoying the heat, just like a lot of us try to do. In the fall, when maples change color along with other deciduous trees, a beautiful display of greens, reds, yellows, and oranges present themselves before they are dropped to the ground, creating a leaf litter that a number of critters and creepy crawlies will call home or even eat. When the leaf litter decomposes, it becomes the top layer of the forest floor, or what is also called duff. 
The Mighty Red Maple and the Brazen Black Spruce each have their own unique styles, and we've only touched the surface of their abilities. But it seems clear, you're going to want to put your money on whoever has the hometown advantage in this fight. When we are in a transition zone, all bets are off. The battle becomes back and forth, and it doesn't matter who wins because we all benefit when any native tree can occur naturally and thrive. Sometimes the maple win, sometimes the spruce. That is what makes them such an important part of keeping the Lake Superior watershed and forest transition zone healthy and diverse.